So it is Friday night, waiting for my steak to rest, and I wanted a fall night, starting to get cooler, I wanted sort of a bigger wine, I didn't know what to go with, and then I looked in my fridge and I did find this wine, it's been in there for a little bit, so this is Herman's Story, called On the Road, this is a Grenache out of California, 2016, this is 15.9% alcohol, nearly 16%, it is a big, big boy. We discovered this from an old podcast I used to listen to a long time ago, and they talked about how concentrated this Grenache was, and Grenache is a high acidic, red fruited type grape, but lower tannin. This one I remember having just, a well, 15.9%, so it's very strong, pretty concentrated from what I remember. Then I went out on this thing and I looked for a lot of Herman Story wines and I found a whole bunch from this one store that sold them and I bought a bunch and then, oh, it's Paso Robles. Irony there, because I've been looking for Paso Robles, but I wasn't... <sighs> Russell P. Fromm was the only winemaker, I remember that name too. I wasn't as overly impressed with some of the other wines. Uh, this was my favorite one by far and then uh, this will be my third one ever, but because I'm kind of not looking for enormous wines anymore. There's a time and a place for it. Steak tonight, maybe. Fall, chilly night, maybe. Let's just see, I don't remember. So Grenache used to be the most planted red grape in the world. Got surpassed by Cabernet. Cabernet makes the most money, so it made sense over time that Cabernet would overtake Grenache. Grenache is made a lot in Spain, a lot in the Southern Rhone, a lot in Southern France. Where else is Grenache pretty prevalent? I'm missing. Oh, uh, Australia. There's some old vine Grenache that's that I haven't had enough of, but I have that on my mental wish list. Priorat in Spain. So I said Spain already, but Spain's got a lot of Grenache. They call it Garnacha. So, not a whole heck of a lot. I've been in California where there's definitely some. So what is this? It's got a raspberry puree and a, and a dark cherry puree aroma like it's concentrated you can it's it's very concentrated hence the puree ripe too ripe mushy puree of those fruits there's not it's a little bit of a minty spearminty aroma very slight smells big and it, it smells very big it doesn't remind me of Grenache in any by any stretch I don't know what I would think this is not Grenache though this is very very big it's been a long time since I had an interruption so a lot of ripeness and it's 2016 so this has a, a few years on it I've never had one this old and it's not that old but Oh, that's big. I mean, that... It's a, del it's, it, it's a delicious wine. I think that's what I remember about it. It, it tastes so big and luscious. The raspberry, the cherry, and the length, and there's this acid, there's a tinkle, like a, a little bit of a baking spice that came in the mid-palate that went away, then it left this long, juicy finish. It's got like a juiciness, but such a ripe, it's a very ripe, it's like the ripest tasting raspberry cherry I can imagine in a wine glass. I can't deny, some, it's delicious. There's a, a very, like a velvety chocolate feel to it, also. I don't get chocolate a lot. I'm getting it out of this. Like a velvety blend between a, like a milk chocolate. There's oak. I think that's where I'm, there's, there's oak, there's vanilla. 
which is what's giving me a little bit of that chocolatey milk chocolate feel. It's got the ripe strawberry, ripe cherry. It's like no herbs at all. Long finish. Go to city. It, it, for 16%, this wine is in balance. I, I can't believe I'm actually saying that. This wine's amazing. It's delicious. It's delicious. I, I didn't remember it being this good. I didn't. This is better than what I remember. And I, I guess if I see another one, I'll get it. I, I think this is the largest, most luscious tasting Grenache I've ever had. Vinified that way with the oak treatment, with the over extraction, the macer extra maceration, I'm sure, on the skins. Tannins aren't huge though. Like you would think with such a enormous wine, you have such tannin, but Grenache doesn't typically have a high tannin. So it's got this concentration without being super tannic. Most 16% wines don't work. This one works. It's delicious. Wow, I'm I'm very impressed. Very impressed. It, it's got you know all those wines have like a kind of funnily so like a fountain hotel. You motel. You never know what it is. Color TV. It looks like an old motel sign, and then on the back it's I forget the whole story for Herman's story, but. Drink it. Actually, put drink at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm have to make a mental remind myself of this wine. It's, it's very. I remember it being very difficult to find. So, gosh, nice surprise. Very nice surprise. That's gonna go amazing with steak. Amazing. So the other wine I want to talk about. I had, I had it last night, but. So I've talked about open source many a times, but they did it with Chardonnay. Well, now the co-op in New Jersey did the same thing where they all combined grapes and they all took a piece of it, of the juice. They went back to their wineries and they made their own rosé. And this is Working Dogs and it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic. I, I, I'm developing, I always thought maybe I would like the rosés that are a little bit bigger what I'm finding is I like the rosés that are a lot paler and I feel like they have a lot more character than the ones that have a little bit more of a pinker hue like Tavel is a rosé out of the south of France and it's got a little bit more extraction of the red grapes I think that one just doesn't I don't know it doesn't taste great this one it's great the one out of Cape May I had two out of Cape May Trudeau Turdo Ed Hawk Haven had really good rosés. I had a good Provence rosé. I did have a bad Bandol rosé recently though, but I think this palish Maybe what it is is the people that are making rosé that are pressing the grapes to make rosé rather than Saunier method which is they press off red wine and some of that is coming off and becoming rosé, but it's really a byproduct of red wine is this rosé where it's an afterthought. I kind of believe the ones that maybe are pressing to make rosé might be better, maybe, because they're specifically trying to hone in on making a high quality rosé. I don't know. I'm guessing here. I don't know that one way is better than the other. I do believe those are the two probably best ways to make a high quality rosé. But So I'm going to go have my steak. It's about the 10 minute mark. Yeah, this wine's uh, tremendous, unbelievable. I am I am in awe of the delicious factor of this wine. I could see someone saying it's a little too oaky, but it doesn't impart this massive amount of tannin. I think the acidity lifts it up and allows it to taste juicy and super ripe and have a delicious factor. And at the end of the day, it is a beverage, and we want to make sure we're enjoying the beverage, and I absolutely am enjoying this Herman story on the road, Grenache. So, with that, have a good night.